Thanks for staying tuned. The launch of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement is expected to bring together into a single market 54 nations with about 1.2 billion people and the combined gross domestic product of over $3 trillion. Now it is also expected to increase the values of intra-African trade by 15 to 25 percent by 2040. In our interview segment, Dr. Abraham Tefa explains what government needs to do to ensure that Africa's largest economy is not left behind in the deal. Take a listen. Dr. Abraham Tefa, thank you very much for joining us on Data. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Let's start off this conversation by looking at the African Union. Cyril Ramaphosa, the South African president, is going to assume leadership of that continental body. Mm -hmm. Now, one of his plans among the numerous who's beginning to line out is that he hopes to engage his colleagues to ensure the implementation of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement mm. on July 1, 2020. I don't know how realistic <laughs> that is, but that's the story, July mm. 1, 2020. What should Nigeria be taking to these engagements? Nigeria would need to go there based on in-house very wide and broad stakeholder consultation on the cost and benefit of Nigeria being part of that, pro, uh, that agreement and, or Nigeria not being out, of, being out of it. Of course, we cannot talk about Nigeria being out of it. We're already in it. Mm -hmm. But the idea now is what aspect of our economy, what sectors do we want to start opening up? What is our contribution to the, go to the global, to the exports, that, um, to, the, to the trade that will be taking place in within this um, continental agreement. Mm. What do we need to rebrand? What reforms do we need to put our manufacturing sector in place? Which sectors do we need to revive? Which, how do we need to, you know, what incentives do we need to give to domestic investors to help them become competitive in that process? We, haven't, we have gone past yeah. this stage, haven't we? Because I recall yeah. that uh, several committees have been put in mm -hmm. place by the president yes. that, you know, I actually think they are broad-based because yes. there are several of them on that committee. No doubt. Now, while implementing the last uh, action committee, mm. President Mahmoud Bouari said, I'll now quote him, Nigeria's approach to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement has been very measured and consistent. What do you make of this statement? Okay, like, again, like you rightly said, we've gone past this process, no doubt. But like the president rightly said, what we need to do there is to ensure that the sectors we... There are some sectors we have to invest in. You know, it's just like closing the border, for instance. Trade is still going on anyway. Whether Nigeria, be, before July 1st or not, trade within African countries is still going on. But when that date comes, to, um, comes into effect, what is the volume of Nigerians' goods, and, goods so mm -hmm. to speak, that will flow into, the, into that basket of commodities that will be traded mm -hmm. within the African continent? So yes, the president's statement shows that every advice, every analysis, every, every scenario analysis that needs to be done has been or, um, done already to examine the cost on us and the benefit. So you're talking about the task ahead of this committee now? E exactly, that we need to invest in now so that by July we will not be there with our goods but are not competitive even within the African um, trade circle. And the reason for the president being cautious all the while is so that Nigeria can get the full benefit exactly. of this arrangement and maximum value. Yes. That's what the president desires. Yes. How do we achieve this? If I, 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 first of all, I like that approach, being cautious. And being, co being cautious is the whole idea of ensuring that we, do a, we did a detailed strength analysis, weakness analysis, opportunities analysis, threat analysis, matched into a cost-benefit analysis to ensure that as we are there, as we go out there with our trade, all our hands are open with trade, we, 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 what we get will be the best. So, but like I said, that's a policy statement. The commitment aspect is for the ministries of trade and industry and every um, stakeholder that is involved in helping the manufacturing sector, our exports, really become competitive. So, good enough, again, the measure that the president took in the 2020 budget by pushing forward the finance bill also has some component for company income tax and other palliatives that will help producers and domestic investors also um, uh, operate ef ef efficiently. So basically, it's the president's job to state to give out to give out policy statement. Those policy statements are serves as a form of direction. It's for implement. Uh, it's for the market now or those involved in production and consumption decision 
to begin to invest into those sectors that want to push out there when this thing comes into effect. Dr. Tefa, this committee's mm. work is coming at a time when the nation's borders, land borders are closed, mm -hmm. right? Tell me how you think this will play out vis-a-vis -vis the agreement and now border closure. In economics, border closure is, is a form of trade war. You know, the, the global economy is one market because of the um, transmission channels of globalization and inter-market, inter 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 Inter, inter country trade. So closing your border against a country that is benefiting from that trade is also a, is a form of tariff. Like the trade war between US and China. It's like saying no, no to your goods. Okay? And for the, the country that is most exposed to this border closure is Repub Republic du Benin. Republic du Benin relies on generally inter country trade, informal cross border trade in uh, West Africa, accounts for 50% of our GDP of all the country's GDP. For Republic du Benin, it is 70% of its GDP and 90% of employment. But unfortunately, formal statistics only capture 6% of this. So that's why that border closure is really telling on them. But on the other hand, Nigeria has a lot of, let me say, negative spillover effect due to that open border. It affects our goods that we ban as still being smuggled in. It becomes a source of security concern. And so it needs to be there needs to be, you know, a careful approach to deciding when to take that, when, when to pull out of that policy. But definitely, for the main time that it was announced, it wasn't too bad for Nigeria. But going forward, Nigeria has to really take a second look at it. Because the reality is that it's not just affecting Benin. It's also affecting line production um, people in Nigeria through mm -hmm. supplies and other channels. Yeah. On the surface, when you look at it, it will appear African leaders are really serious about integration of the continent mm. at the day. Yes. I mean, when you look at the implementation agreement that we're talking about, mm -hmm. and then ECOWAS, on the other hand, pushing very strongly for a single currency for the uh, continent. Mm. Marry these two and tell me, what is the overall effect? Okay. Um, African Union's long-term objective, which is captured in its the Africa We Want Vision 2063 is to achieve an integrated Africa. The whole NEPAD idea is also the new partnership for Africa's development that was also kickstarted in 2001. It's also part of the mechanism to ensure that we have one big Africa that is interconnected through trade and hopefully, eventually, removing all this issue of requiring visas to get to one country or the other. But to attain that overall African integration, what happened at the regional level is that Echo, uh, the West African countries have their own region, regional um, framework, ECOWAS. East Africa has theirs, uh, South Africa has theirs, and the North Africa and the Middle East are also there. But generally, in terms of the sub-Saharan Africa, every continent, every region, including South, Central Africa, has their own region, has their own regional block. Now, the idea is that once integration among the countries within those blocks has been heightened and, uh, and has attained a level for which Every country, it's Pareto optimal in, 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 in the benefit that comes to them. Mm. Pare Pareto optimal in the sense that one country's benefit will not necessarily lead to another country's losing its own benefit. Once that level has been attained, the idea now is to, because one market, market is basically, market is defined by two things. The currency, which is the price and commodities. Mm. So we need to harmonize. One region cannot have many, country, many currencies flying here, fly, flying there. Mm. So basically, we cannot sell our goods with too many currencies. This is the bottom line. We need one currency to do, to, do, to do the speaking. Yes, we may lose the Naira, Ghana may lose the CD, everybody will lose their own currency. Just like in, in the Eurozone, that's the whole essence of this echo, to make Afri trade within ECOWAS stronger and to make the pricing, the currency used for its uh, as its identity to be unified. Thank you very much for your insight on this issue. Thank you very much. I'm glad I'm to have you on data in Abuja. I agree. Thank you. Thanks for staying with us. I'm afraid this is where we draw the cutting on this week's episode of the program. But you can send your views and comments using the email address and Twitter handle on your screen. Also, be sure to share anything that is happening within your locality with us. Let me remind you that you can view the program on youtube.com forward slash channel swap slash videos. Thank you for watching and we wish you a prosperous new year. I'm Ibrahim Adra. We'll see you again next time.